there's something really special about a, a real world interaction um, and bringing people together in, in the real world. And DIY days like kind of bridges that. In 2006, I started a, 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 a community uh, that was called the Workbook Project. Really, it started with a blog, and I was just frustrated by the process of like, you know, kind of getting work out into the world. I had done a lot of DIY, a lot of do-it-yourself kind of things, and and I felt like there were always people that were asking me about, well, how did you do that, and how did that work, and can I pick your brain, and all this stuff. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to create this site, and I'm going to just share process. But I'll document it so people can go back. And, and, and hopefully add to it. And so the workbook project was really kind of founded on those principles and it grew to uh, like a global community with people in 30 different countries participating within it. And it ran to a certain point, like I, I think it ran for about six years and then kind of transitioned into what we're doing with uh, Reboot Stories and what we're doing with DIY Days. And DIY Days originally started as an offline component to that community where people could come together and it was like this social sandbox where you would get like storytellers and game designers and you would get effectively uh, engineers or architects and you would get educators and activists and you get these people from all different perspectives coming together under this guise of storytelling, you know, because they saw value within story. And um, the events were always free, they were staffed by volunteers. And uh, over the course of, I guess, about five years, we've, we've created, a, you know, we've run about 12 of them, and we just started taking them to other parts of the world. DIY days are broken into a three-act structure. You know, there's the learn, which is effectively the morning, where people are making presentations and sharing different things, and that's meant to be inspirational. And then uh, the second part of the day, the second act, is all about do. So people kind of roll up their sleeves and they go through a number of different workshops, they go through experiences, they do iterative design, they play test things, and they collaborate. And then the last part of the day is a share, and we're always challenging that. Like, what does that share mean? We've done things where we've co-created with kids and done a performance at the end of the day. You know, we've done things where we, we kind of come together and uh, we're building something and we unveil it at the end of the day. But that share is meant to embody the learn and the do, and then kind of hopefully leave something behind that can work within that community or help to uh, invigorate that community. So uh, it's really kind of focused on like this idea, can, can we spark that imagination of many? And can we help people to better creatively sustain? There's so much that's online these days, but there's something really special about a, a real world interaction um, and bringing people together in, in the real world. And DIY days like kind of bridges that. It, it creates this really interesting dynamic where people can, uh, they engage, they come together, they meet people, and then they go off and they collaborate on wonderful things. I think one of the really, one of the most, uh, one of the things I'm most proud about out of DIY Days to date is the theme of that particular event in Los Angeles was about mentorships and dropout rates. You know, can a student become a teacher and a teacher become a student? And uh, it was really wonderful because uh, a participant uh, came and we incubated within it a project that he had been working on, which was, was called Kane's Arcade. And Kane's Arcade was this wonderful story about a, a nine-year-old boy who was building an arcade for, you know, just for the fun of it, and he set it up at his dad's auto parts store in downtown LA, and he just sat there, and he would see, sit there weekend after weekend, and nobody had ever played it. And then this gentleman from our community, Nirvan, goes by to buy a door handle for his Toyota Corolla, meets Kane, and he's like, what is this arcade? And he buys a fun pass from, from Kane. What was really interesting was it became this thing between the two of them where they were both, it was, a, it was this wonderful kind of, um, that, that whole idea of the student and the teacher and, and how they can teach each other things. And that project just went on to do phenomenally well, you know, it, uh, over eight million views. Kane got to drive uh, like a, Rose, uh, uh, a Mars rover, you know, he's done all these amazing things and, and Nirvan's done all these amazing things and, and the relationship that they've built is really a special relationship. And, and I, I think DIY days and what we were doing with the workbook project is all about like how can we help empower people to be better storytellers, but then also to collaborate in really interesting ways. In terms of creating that environment, it's like how can I create a creative environment like that that allows people to step in and participate 
empowers them, gives them some sense of agency. So I think play can be a really powerful thing. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what games are and what games can do, but they're really powerful. They can be very powerful and they can be these wonderful things that connect people and creatively inspire them. So I think at the core of most of the projects that I'm doing, I'm always kind of looking for what's that perfect balance between storytelling, participatory aspects of the project and, and a playfulness. Um, and so that's, that's what we strive to do. Hi, my name is Lance Weiler, and you should really subscribe to Thinker, because I do too.